I'm not one for teaching, but I want to do a paint study and I thought I would take you with me. So normally I paint on canvas, but I'll be painting this on paper this time. And so it will dry a bit quicker and I'll be using glaze medium to help prolong that drying time so we can work with the blending. But I just thought I'd take you with me and show you what I look for in a painting. I'm not going for lightness, but I'm going for the mood and expression and how I connect to this painting. And so I thought I'd just talk you through the process of what I'm looking for and what I'm thinking of as I go through it. So it won't be my exact thoughts, obviously. I can't tell you perfectly give you that, but I'll be doing voiceover and I'll be doing little snippets like this throughout to hopefully bring you as close to what I'm thinking of as possible. This time we're going to go on pexels.com, which is a great free copyright resource. And I also have some of my own photos on there as well, which you can use. So I'll put all those links in the description. So let's get started. So you don't have to create a sharp edge with the masking tape. It's just something nice to do sometimes. And I like to use this warm gray to get rid of the white. And you can then obviously see your white paint that much easier. So I'll try and talk you through the process as we get through the actual painting. So I'm always walking that tightrope between representation and stylized, and proportions is something that I do struggle with. I've done many years of life drawing and more so portraits of recently. So if we look at the relationship between the nose and the pupils, you can kind of line up where the nose is in relation to where the centre of the eye is, and look at how, how much is above the lip. and. Just looking at where things line up, you can still create a good portrait though and a good painting without it having that lightness. So in this particular video we're going to be working from scratch, from looking at that reference photo. So I always start with an outline, trying to get the shape of the face and getting the tilt right, which I do again struggle with, it's my Achilles heel. And so I'm just creating a rough shape and then working back in with the eyes where I will create a negative space where the pupil will be. So I always start with the main features, the eyes, nose and mouth, and then you, the great thing about acrylic is you can always paint over it, and on this paper it's drying very quickly, and that can be a blessing and a curse, so you can use this to layer up. If you need it to last longer, you can use glaze medium. If you look at the kind of main colour, if you put that down, then you need to start thinking of the shadows and contrast, which when you're first starting out, you tend to put down that one colour but if you really look you can see there's many colours within the face and eyes so at the moment I'm just putting that down very light brown which I can then paint over later just to help me get a feel for this face and I don't get the proportions quite right but you'll see that in a moment and just really starting to build this face up and it was only about an hour worth of painting and so it won't be as detailed as it would be if I spent longer on it. So once again this is not really me teaching you but just talking through my process and so I don't use the literal colours that can be seen in the reference photo. I will use purple and blues for the contrast and the darks and then the light pinks and oranges and um, the lighter warmer colours for the highlights. So it's kind of that relationship between if it, is it a warm colour or is it a cooler colour. And initially I put down this white on the right hand side, but it's not really white in the reference photo, which is usually fine, but it just didn't quite read the way I wanted, so I will adjust that later. And you can use different brushes, so this one has some bristles at the end, which is good for the hair later. But I tend to stick to the one brush for most of it, smaller brush for the details. and that's probably beyond the scope of this video but you can get a feel for those brushes and you tend to I tend to have about four that I go back to and use for painting I don't tend to overcomplicate it when it comes to brushes I then just manipulate the paint as I want and use it quite thickly to drip okay so now you can see me building up the layers on the mouth at this particular time so I've got a bit of purple to the left for that shadow and I've got pink as the main base colour and then I'm using a darker red at the moment and out of the tube it's too bright so I add a bit of blue into it to bring it down into 
more towards the purple and there will be another video at some point i guess around mixing colors and paint but there's different spectrums of hue within the colors so you can use darker colors and white to change that um, i'll go in more into the theory at another time and, and really i think what brings you up to the next stage is just thinking of all the different colors you can put within these layers which gives it a bit more interest it gives it a bit more depth and if you look at the subject matter it's not all one color there's different shadows and there's different pigmentation of the skin and yes i'm using non-literal colors but i can play around with all these different kind of contrasts and giving it a bit more interest and also play around with it being a good painting as well so you can think of the brush strokes actually going along when you get to the later stages and this painting i haven't really captured the essence of this person i'm trying to capture the mood and i guess you put some of your own mood within your paintings so again this video is really about expression and letting go because i've come across a lot of people who don't know where to start even and maybe this video will make it even more difficult but I think what it shows is that you can paint over any mistakes you make. It's not it's not a final brush stroke. There's a lot of adjustment in painting and hopefully this real time will show that. And I will be linking other videos that I think might be useful. So here I, I'm adjusting the colour to better represent what the reference photo is. And just playing around with the shape of the face here. And again, I think at this stage I kind of almost had it and then I lose it again and that's just the nature of painting you're going back and forth and like I say this is just a study to improve to be able to push paint around is a fantastic thing and connects us with ourselves and the world around us you can start layering up all different colors and I've got a little bit of Naples yellow a bit of orange a bit of red a little bit of blue and white within that chin color so there's a lot of different colors within that that create that nice kind of warm skin tone orange there although once again it's not quite matching the skin tone in the reference photo but that's not what I'm going for so quite often when I ask clients to send me close-ups of the eyes of either the human portrait or the pet portrait they will just say the eyes are brown or the eyes are green but if you look at these brown eyes they have a lot of green pigment within them a lot of yellow and orange and other shades of brown and many other colours in between that kind of make up the brown colour. So it's really good to you begin looking carefully and seeing what colours you can see. And so I start off with the brown as the base colour and then I layer up with some yellow ochre and Naples yellow on top, just on the edges, not on not on the entire eye. And then I start using a bit of green um, I forget which which green a uh, sap green I think and then added a bit of white to that and started playing around with the relationship between the two and I think really as an artist it's difficult to as I'm finding in this video to try and explain the actual process and to teach and I think what it comes down to is just getting obsessed with art just looking at all the YouTube videos looking at all the books and also just trying to paint from life paint from a photo paint from still life and just look at these subtle changes of color and also something that i learned is when you're looking at the shadow of a color if you mix that color with what's opposite on the color wheel that should give you that particular shade of color which will be good for the shadows something that i learned in one of slew's videos which i will try and find and link I think it's one of the slab videos that he did. So as we go into this video, as I start trying to correct the nose, I start losing some of this structure of the face and it gets a bit messy with the busyness. But I'm still overly happy with it. It's that age old thing of knowing when to stop. So. I'm just adding more detail to the eye and I'm just adding a bit, a bit of blue to this black so it's not a pure black and this adds just that little bit of structure around the eye. So I'm now going to be using this brush which is very useful. It's got very separated bristles and just creates some nice strands for the hair which you can play around with where they go and 
hair is one of those things that I'm going to be concentrating on more because as an artist, I tend to, there's some things I favour more than others and I get good at those. So clouds and hair are the next thing I'm going to start obsessing with and improving on. But I'm reasonably happy with how this hair went. And as I say, this is a study to practice and to improve. And I'm just taking you along the journey with me. And it just started teaching me about what could be done in terms of what brushes to use and how to structure hair. There's, I've got a long way to go, but I'm reasonably happy with this starting point into that new realm of improvement. So the only thing, so the one thing I haven't mentioned is that when I'm painting, I tend to go into that flow state. I'm not really thinking about anything in particular. I'm thinking about all these things subconsciously, but I'm not overly stressing about them or worried about them. I'm just thinking, how's the hair flow? What does it feel like? Getting that sort of flowing feeling. I'm not thinking like technically or structurally how to paint. I'm just thinking about what colour is underneath the hair, what colour is on top, and what's showing in between, and this feeling I'm trying to get off this person. And that's kind of how I paint. It's like I embody it, I feel it, and I'm in that flow state. And yes, I'm thinking about all these things, but because I've learnt them, I'm not really thinking about them overly, except for the bits that I'm trying to improve upon. And even then, it's kind of embodied and just taking on and noticing and accepting that that's how it should be done. And of course, there's no real rules to this, so you can break the rules where you want to. So at this stage, I was kind of happy with the portrait, but... I was really trying to think what would finish this off and I tried to work more on the contrast and adding more depth to the hair and just enjoying adding more and more layers and paint to this and it's again knowing when to stop and this video is quite difficult to explain where the layers are coming from but I hope keeping it more or less to long form content you've been able to at least see that it all starts with a base layer and then you see what colours you can see and different contrasts and just keep adding on top of that to create your layers and I think that's where people get frustrated is they try and put the colour down straight away and think it's done but you're adding on top all the time just readjusting and it's difficult to try and explain what that kind of feels and looks like but I hope this gives it more of an insight into my brain and how I work. So really, again, it's that flow state of being kind of connected to this person. Um, obviously, it's a model and a very beautiful young woman, but you can also add a bit of your own kind of story to that and play around with the structure of the face and not necessarily do it in a literal sense, but just use it as a starting point, as a reference point. And that's where the reference photo is for me is it's not this ultimate level because the photo is already precise so I don't tend to go as far as photorealistic and I wouldn't be able to if I tried but it's all about self-expression and thinking what do you want to create and at this stage I kind of push it a bit further thinking kind of add a bit more of my colour kind of palette to it and I kind of lose it and then bring it back and lose it again. And that, again, is the nature of painting, just adjusting and figuring it out. So I'll be very interested to hear what you think of this painting or any of this talking you through, because this is definitely a new type of video for me. Now, I'm being brave and I'm going to show you this stage because the reason I'm showing this is because I wanted to show you that if you get anything wrong, you can move it. And this chin was just a little bit too close to the bottom lip. However, looking back at the footage, it was definitely, despite being technically wrong, it looked better than my corrections, as you'll see in a moment. So while corrections are difficult, they are possible. I just didn't quite do it justice on this occasion. But again, that is the nature of painting. You're gonna have good and bad days. And overall, I'm really happy with the painting still, but it's, I should have stopped a lot sooner because it was working at that stage. So this is definitely showing that you can have a good painting even though the proportions may be wrong and that's okay. So I should have stopped a bit earlier but 
I think at this stage, as you're seeing in the image right now, it got closer to the shape of the face and I was able to bring those colours back a bit more towards the end. <laughs> Okay, so I haven't ended this yet, so this was a real experiment, but what I want to really get hold of is to encourage you to just get obsessed with art, to quench that thirst for self-expression, and through doing so, it's the age-old thing of practice makes perfect, but it won't feel like practice, it'll feel like a lifestyle and something that you need to do. I always get that itch where I need to create something, and that's what this was about, but I decided to make a video as well, which is also another creative outlet. So a bit different video, a bit more long form. I'm going to do a part two where I'll show you what I do when I'm working from a sketch where my proportions actually saw I struggle with and so I use Photoshop and a sketch to get around that. And It's just a little bit quicker, good way to shortcut things and that'll be in part two around here somewhere. So I hope you enjoy this video, a bit of an experiment as all of them tend to be. Some work, some don't, and I hope you got something from this, and I shall see you in the next video.